What's up guys, Houndish here, and today we're jumping in with a new Destiny 2 season of the Wish video. And in this one, we're going to take a look at some of the new rewards we'll be able to unlock this season, including new exotic weapons and armor. So we can now get a more in-depth look at that, but also other key objectives for the season, things like the new title, some upcoming quest content, and we'll cover new exotics and cosmetics. Plus we've got vendor reset for the week, the Eververse store, featured weapons, and key rewards as we head into the first reset of the new season. So as always, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video today. If you do, be sure to get subscribed and I'll keep you posted with more Destiny content. But without further delay, let's get into it. And so getting into the game alongside the new season right here, of course, initially, you can expect an intro cinematic as well as an initial sort of opening mission. So as always, jump into that. And then, of course, we can continue on with this season content. And then otherwise, until we get into vendor stuff in just a moment, of course, in terms of new rewards, we get exotic stuff. So we've got the Dragon's Breath right here, and it's got composite propellant and rockets embed themselves in struck targets and periodically inject or eject, sorry, incendiary fuel that inflicts scorched damage. And the longer the weapon goes without firing, the more fuel the next rocket contains. On top of that, we can see it's got volatile launch, black powder, and then high octane, and igniting nearby targets partially replenishes fuel, and the weapon refills itself from reserves upon gaining maximum fuel. So pretty interesting, certainly curious to try it out. It's also got short action stock right there. And once acquired, we can of course visit Banshee to pick up the quest and work on getting the catalyst. Otherwise, though, in terms of exotics, there's not a whole lot that's visible right here in collections. We can see that there's going to be an ornament for the new exotic bow. This was revealed inside of the trailer. The one thing that we can add for the exotic bow, though, is that it's called Wishkeeper, and it says it's discovered among the mysteries of the Black Garden. Charge Wishkeeper by dispatching your foes and lay traps for any that remain. So presumably that will be an exotic quest weapon that we'll pick up later on in the season. But for now, that's all we have to initially preview in this video. And in terms of exotic armor, currently in collections, there isn't anything visible. So Bungie haven't spoken about it, but the assumption for the moment is that we're not getting new exotic armor this season. So give us your thoughts about that down below. We can, however, see the new title for the season, which is Wishbearer. And as always, there are a bunch of objectives. We won't go into all of them for the purposes of this video. Nice new exotic ghost shell available right there. So give us your thoughts on the Wishbearer title. And otherwise, in terms of rewards, I will be sure to keep you posted. But getting into the typical vendor reset stuff, right here we've got the Eververse inventory for the week. We may as well take a quick look. Of course, there are new items like the new Thorn ornament right here, currently available for silver. Kind of cool stuff, Root of Nightmares sort of vibes going on right there. Potentially some of these will be available for Bright Dust as well, so I'll keep you posted with Eververse inventories for the season. But for the inventory this week, initially, we've got the Lion Tamer exotic emo, which is 3,250 Bright Dust from back in Season of the Lost right there. We also have the Cosmos Shell Exotic Ghost available right here, and that one is 2850 Bright Dust. And then there is the Box of Tricks Transman Effect available this week, as always, costing 450 Bright Dust. And then we get a new shader for the season right here, uh, Princely Presence, which I believe I'm saying correctly right there. A rather bright looking shader, but a new one nonetheless in the store this week. And then also we've got Golden Age Wine. And as always, all of the shaders in Eververse cost 300 Bright Dust. And continuing to focus on Bright Dust items, as always, we don't tend to see a lot of very brand new stuff for Bright Dust in the early weeks of the season, but we've got the Nothing to See Here exotic emote available for 3,250 Bright Dust. On top of that, though, we've got the Slap Fight, uh, a legendary multiplayer emote, which is available right there, and that one's 1,250 Bright Dust. And then there is the Scavenged, uh, scavenged Shell Exotic Ghost, which is 2,850 Bright Dust. And in addition to that, we've got the Assembly Stinger Exotic Ship here, which is 2,000 Bright Dust this week. So we'll take a quick preview of that one. Rather interesting looking thing. And then we also have the Roaring Primeval Exotic Sparrow, which is 2,500 Bright Dust. Of course, Exotic Sparrows, or Sparrows in general, have had their speeds updated, so they're all much faster now, which is a positive. Cool kind of Wither Horde themed one right there. And then we've got the final warning ornament here, the Flowing Phoenix, which is a pretty nice one, and that's available for 1,250 Bright Dust. And also there is the Riven Projection, which is rather fitting right here for 1,500 Bright Dust. But for the second page featured shaders, we've got uh, Calco's Finery available up first. Once again, they'll always cost 300 Bright Dust. There's also the Neopop Wave available in the store this week, and Butterbark is available once again right here as well. And then we've got Nectar Dynamo available in the store too, so give us your thoughts on those. But also there is the Seaver Emergence Transman Effect. These are 450 Bright Dust each. In addition to that, 
We've got the stasis entrance transmat effect available this week. And finally, the ossified entrance available in the store as well. So let us know anything you plan to grab. Of course, I'll keep you posted on Bright Dust versus Silver items early on this week when I can. Uh, once again, makes sense that we don't get a ton of brand new stuff available for Bright Dust. But of course, you can jump in and preview all the items available for Silver. Just keep in mind, many of them will be available for Bright Dust later in the season as well. Also, a quick mention right here, separate to the rest of the season weapons, of course, we can get the new Ritual weapon available on the Ritual vendors. So Shax the Drifter and Zavala, and this is the Chivalric Fire. We can see it does have Relentless Strikes or Repulsor Brace. It's also got Tempered Edge and Balance Guard. And then we've got Attrition Orbs, or Destabilizing Rounds, with Attrition Orbs being a new perk, and dealing sustained damage creates an Orb of Power. So that's one of the new weapons. Uh, this one also has Vanguard's Vindication, One Quiet Moment, and Gun and Run. So uh, give us your thoughts on that one down below. There's also the new Competitive Division Pulse Rifle uh, right here, and we can see it's got Fluted Barrel and Full Bore. It's called the Belisarius D, if I'm saying that correctly, an Aggressive Burst Hard Hitting 4 Burst Fire. Hake Pulse Rifle, and it's got Ricochet Rounds as well as Vorpal Weapon and Headseeker as well. Then we've got Handlaid Stock and Hake Breach Armaments actually in the same slot right there. So let us know if you plan to work on picking this one up from the Competitive Division this season as well. But for Banshee's inventory right here, Bungie have switched up uh, how the rewards are obtained. And of course, there is focused decoding where we'll get different foundries featured every day over the course of four days. So day one is Amalon and Soros, as we can see here. And then day two should be Soros and Hake, with day three being Hake and Voiced, and day four being Voiced and Amalon. And then featured weapons are now just these ones on the second page. So we've got the Lunar Latter 4B with well rounded and successful warm up, Iota Draconis with Under Pressure and Frenzy. And then Dire Promise with Autoloading Holster and Rangefinder, as well as Cold Denial with Grave Robber and Unrelenting. Then the Palmyra B, uh, which has got Surplus and Chain Reaction. Just keep in mind, these weapons, uh, the featured weapons, will potentially change throughout the course of the week as well. But finally, at Ada 1, if you're interested, this week there is the Tangled Web Set of Armor. And then we've got the Valkyrie uh, Zero Shader right here. Man, I'm trying to rush too quick. Uh, this one from back in the Warmind era to add to collections. There's also Tangled Rust. Once again, these all cost 10,000 Glimmer. And then we also have the new Monarchy Succession. Not sure how frequently these ones have come up over the past few weeks. Maybe they've updated Ada to be able to sell slightly different shaders. I'm not sure. Let us know in the comment section. For some final bits of content right here, we don't know what the Nightfall weapon is this week because we've got a new rotation. And typically, we need to see the full rotation before we know exactly which weapons will drop. But the Nightfall itself this week is PsyOps Battleground on the Cosmodrome. So it's interesting to see that one come back. Of course, it will also be a Grandmaster Nightfall this season. No doubt there'll be a couple of sticky bits inside of that, especially on GM. But Give us your thoughts down below and let us know if you plan to dive into the Nightfall this week. Otherwise, for featured activities, Operation Seraph Shield is the exotic mission this week, so if you want to work on crafting Revision Zero, that's still an option. But for the featured raid, we've got The Last Wish, where of course we can pick up the 1000 Voices exotic. And it's a pretty fitting first featured raid for the season, of course. But on top of that, the Duality Dungeon is featured as well, where we've got the Heart Shadow exotic sword, which is farmable this week. So if you still need to pick that one up, it is a good time to farm. And typically right here, we'd break down all of the featured Lost Sectors for the week. We can't do that as we don't know what the new rotation will be, but of course Lost Sectors have been updated and now have chances to drop various different Foundry weapons on a daily basis. So we get additional drops of those and we get more Gunsmith Engram drops from Lost Sectors as well. So if you're looking to focus for any weapons at Banshee, Lost Sectors are going to be one of the main ways to get those Engrams, which is cool. For today though, guys, that's everything we have to break down inside of this video. So give us your thoughts down in the comment section. Let us know what you think of the new exotics and rewards for the season. And as always, I'll be keeping you posted with more info as the content rolls out. So definitely get subscribed to the channel, keep it locked and loaded, hit the notification bell as well if you don't want to miss out on any content. But otherwise, I appreciate you tuning in and whatever you get up to, I hope you guys have an awesome day.